Activate sonar. Altera, I'm not seeing any signs of life. How do I put mods in this? There's the ion cube. Damn it, why can't I remember? Where, where did the... <gasps> oh God, oh shit, what the... F oh, okay, all right, whatever. It's, why did the su sunbeam event play? <gasps> oh God, oh that's my intro now. <laughs> oh. I'm trying to figure out how I put my, uh, my upgrades. Oh, there it is. Oh, I have to have this dock. Okay, so here's the idea. I want to take the shark submarine, which is the most advanced submarine to ever hit Subnautica modding, and I need to take it down here. If you remember in the last video, I went to an unknown subsurface contact, and that took me to a place called the Void Spikes, a brand new area with a brand new biome and a brand new terrifying leviathan that I couldn't show you last time. Well, now I can show you the leviathan, kind of. Now, I assume this is my old shipwreck. I've updated my mod files, and now we're going to head back and return. Let me just go ahead and dock the shark submarine into the Atlas. No, I'm kidding. I, can't, I still can't. I still can't use it, guys. I'm sorry. One day, okay? One day, this will be possible. And once we get past the void spikes and we see the new Leviathan and everything is done with that, I'm going to share some information about the next Subnautica with you. And I'm also going to be talking about Subnautica in UE5. I found some information that was so buried, Obraxus himself had to put me on hold to verify that everything I gave him after hours of translation and digging was ultimately information that was genuinely public and was intended to be public and is something that I could share with you. So needless to say, it's going to be pretty interesting later on in this video because this is cool. Oh, this is a problem. I can't, I can't install upgrades on the shark submarine unless it's docked and it won't dock. Um, I don't want to talk about it, but I did manage to get the vehicle upgrades in. I had to do some stuff and it kind of did stuff to my base as well. But hey, I have a fancy new shield suit. So that will definitely come in handy. For now, let's go ahead and head out to, ooh, uh, wait, battery's dead? How is the battery dead? I bet. Oh my, are you kidding me? Okay, well, I'll make a battery. Oh, God damn it. I gotta fix all of this? Oh my God, this is gonna take forever. I hate this. I hate every second of this. For anyone that wasn't around during the last video, I know it's kind of weird to have these plants here. These plants are here specifically because I need. No, it's gone! So breathing fluid is really vital because it's used in the liquid breathing system and the recirculation mass. What that lets us do is go to the deepest depths of the ocean, in this case, uh, the restricted zone, which then leads to the shipwreck of our previous ship without dealing with the effects of barrel trauma, which is uh, pretty catastrophic to, to deal with. And now, with all of that, we are prepared to... Oh, God damn it, man. Why did the ion cube not go in there? Where did my ion cubes go? Man, why? Everything that's gonna stop me is gonna try and stop me. We are good to go. And we have architect technology. We're good. Everything is fine. So I need to go to the restricted zone. To get to the restricted zone, I need to go through a very harrowing area uh, of the void, I think. And I need to get past the... Uh, so, uh, Aurora? Yeah, the Aurora. Okay. This shouldn't be too difficult. Just give me a second to actually get to... Ow, oh, damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Stop. Okay. I think we just entered the void. Are we in the void now? Is it... Oh, yeah. That's the void. Am I picking anything up? Oh, my God. The architect scanner can go so far. Where? Okay, I'm seeing little glimpses of it. Oh! There it is right there! Oh god, that is... 
not okay. It only gets the density of the bone. It doesn't get anything else. Okay, I should focus on... Uh, is that where I'm going? That's where I'm going. Okay. Time to... Time to... Quickly... And cautiously... Oh, God! Okay! Oh! God damn, dude! Oh, my God! I think it disabled my systems. Oh, my God. It disabled my systems. I can't even move. Oh, shit. That's not good. Well, I guess I'm just gonna huff it. It entirely disabled that submarine in one EMP blast. That is terrifying. God damn! Oh, I hope this shield works! You've got your work cut out for you! Oh, God, it's doing flips. Okay. All right. I think the shield scared it. It didn't know what it was looking at. And it, it just, it didn't want that. Oh, my God. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that's terrifying. My God. Just keep going. I just have to make it to, I think, 800 or around there. Oh! Oh. Okay. <laughs> I gotta be fast with that trigger finger. I don't, I don't want to get eaten by that thing. I think it's done. Okay. That's good. Yes. Okay. I'm almost there. So I'm not sure how or why, but my oxygen hasn't gone down in a while. What the, what is the, oh, okay. All right. That's, that's that. Um, I'm assuming it's because I have an extra, um, bottle of breathing fluid. So like it won't let my fluid automatically go all the way down. So I just, <gasps> okay, brown. Man, and I also don't understand because the shipwreck that I was going towards is now over there. Like, it was, it was here. Like, it was supposed to be here. So, oh god, damn, dude, don't do that. So, judging by this right here, the beacon is here. But, it, what the fuck, man? <laughs> That's not okay. But it's showing it as over there that, whoa. There's some really weird stuff going on with the material. Oh, wow. That looks really weird. There's some really strange stuff. Damn, man. Stop. Really strange stuff happening. What is abyssal? What is this? Small, dense crystals formed under extreme pressures with a trace amount of exotic elements. Is okay. What did that down there? What's that? Whoa, that's a ghost leviathan. Okay, don't, don't mess with that. Oh, that's just a spade fish. What? There was something down here that just did the EMP thing. I better make my way back to the base before my jar of liquid oxygen decides to, uh... Not be full! God! Damn, man. <sighs> Wait, like, it seems like it's something teleporting around. What's this? What's this glowing thing? Is this another fish? That's just another fish. That's a mesmer. Whatever it is, it's teleporting around. And avoiding me at this point. Ow! What the? Get, ow! Dude! What did I do to you? Don't laugh at me. Go away. Oh, it's biters. Oh, shit. Now it's down there. What is happening? Why? Why is it avoiding me? Oh, never mind. I thought that. <laughs> I thought I saw something, but it was just the, the floating orb things. Shit. And now it's over there. Am I. Like, it. It, like, the EMP wave disables my flashlight and any form of light that I have that I could use. Okay, I'm just gonna jump out of this because clearly we're not getting anywhere with this. Okay, so with every encounter, the Leviathan seems to teleport away from you and ultimately, you aren't going to easily see the source of those EMP waves. Today, for the first time ever, we're getting an exclusive look at the Leviathan that lives 3,000 kilometers beyond the void, in the Void Spikes. This is the photogalvanic Leviathan, or at least concept art of it, a deepwater predator that thrives in the most desolate of areas, the Void Spikes included. It uses electric and light-based attacks to stun and incapacitate prey or threats, and it's able to disrupt sonar waves and cause havoc on electrical systems as it tracks you 
through the dark. It kind of reminds me of the silence in all honesty. I did a little bit of digging on this concept art and it seems to stem from a different piece called the Abyssal Dragon. To the point I brought up with the dev, I felt like the artwork might have been traced in a comparison. And as you can see here, this is a comparison. There are a lot of similarities when it comes to the design and shape of the creature, but there are some pretty, like the, the fins for instance on the back and like, the face structure, there are some pretty significant differences as well. So it, maybe it was used for inspiration. We'll, we'll touch base on that again in a second. I'm not one to support traced work and I'm confident the mod developer had no idea or knowledge or even reason to suspect tracing. So I offered to help work with them to create a Leviathan after they expressed they were open to have someone recreate the creature for them. There is a model that exists, but it is a very heavy work in progress, so I can understand now why it's not exactly easy to get your hands on it and see it. And in all honesty, to me, this doesn't reflect the Leviathan we see in the concept art. And I'm not saying it's bad, please don't think that I'm, I'm trying to put someone down for their work. I just don't think that it's very accurate to the design. I did reach out to the architects of the unknown, the people that made the gargantuan leviathan, and without even asking, they literally threw these rough examples back of what they could see themselves doing with it. I'm actually floored to see these because I didn't expect any of this so quickly and the design is so accurate even though it's a rough draft. But before we move forward, I want to ask the community, do you feel we should modify the design of the Leviathan because of suspected tracing? Or do you feel there is enough variation in the fins and the facial structure, etc., to continue with this Leviathan design? And obviously, if you're interested in extending your own hand to help with this Leviathan, please don't hesitate. We would love to see some people jump in and volunteer some time or try and help out. Okay, let's talk about the next Subnautica. There's quite a bit of interesting information. It'll start a bit slow with financials, but it gets quite interesting to the point where a Subnautica developer had to literally verify everything was public information before giving me the okay to share any of this with you. I follow Liam on Twitter. They are a lead artist at Unknown Worlds who is confirmed to be working on the next Subnautica. Recently, they put out a message saying there would be tons of stuff to show on the next Subnautica. Even game blogs are picking this up stating the next Subnautica is well underway. It's not a huge piece of news, but I guess news is news as far as that's concerned. And if you have an official from Unknown Worlds talking about this now, they're getting more comfortable with going public with anything that they might want to show us with the next Subnautica. So that got me thinking, what's out there already? Are there any dots I can connect like I've done in the past? And well, there are some really big dots you can connect if you understand the financial backing of Subnautica. Follow the money and you'll find where it's going. I started with trademarks and found a new filing covering Subnautica comics and graphic novels with a bunch of other stuff from the 10th of April this month. So the marks that Subnautica have already cover video games, clothing for merchandise and etc. But this new filing means if they ever wanted to make a Subnautica TV show or an animated series or a graphic novel, then they have the rights to do that. They have the license, they have the mark, they have the protection, and that's basically that. They're protected goods and services for them. But that was pretty well a dead end. So then I looked at Krafton, because Krafton is the company that is basically facilitating everything with the next Subnautica and Unknown Worlds now. So first, I started looking into public investor events and financials, because how do you get people to give you money? You show them cool stuff that's gonna generate money. Subnautica is one of Krafton's biggest console revenue generators, still seeing massive income with sales to this day. Now on to our console business. Krafton is servicing the most number of console titles since 2017, including Terra, PUBG, and Unknown Worlds Subnautica. Console revenue in Q3 grew 22% QRQ and 134% YOI at 11.7 billion won. Stable revenue of Subnautica and PUBG's Destin Map and Pass received good response from the console users, leading growth. For your reference, the combined PC and console revenue accounts for 33% in Q3. That basically means it'll be no surprise when we likely see the next Subnautica announced for console players along with PC, but I decided to dig deeper. And among the slew of everything Krafton has been pitching to investors, I found Krafton's pipeline for incubating, and that's the game release plan from 2023 to 2025. This is what I found so far. In the details, it says the next Subnautica 
So here's how I've broken this down. 2023 to 2025 obviously means the years. We have six total strategic launches. In 2024, there are four, and in 2025, there are two. Creative, Studio, PC, and Console, there is a total of seven launches. Two this year, two next year, or three next year, and then two the year after. I'm assuming Subnautica is going to be detailed and strategic, just for the simple fact that details line up with this right here. We don't see anything for 2023. However, 2024 is showing there are four releases, and then 2025, we're seeing two. This is a huge no-no in the game dev world, by the way. You don't typically just throw out, like, a potential game release plan this early. Like, this is, this is still pretty damn early, and I'd be very impressed if the next Subnautica has anything super impactful, uh, impactful that they could show even today. With the limited time, they've had to show the story, the assets, and basically everything else. Uh, there is always the chance that it could also fall underneath 2023 with the creative studio, PC, console stuff, but I don't, I don't see anything happening with Subnautica this year in 2023. I just don't see anything being released. Maybe they'll release some teasers, but we're probably not going to get a game. However, I am pretty sure, like 99% sure, that we're going to see early access. We will probably be playing Subnautica through its development process as it's updated and as we get to experience the new Leviathans that are added, new zones that are unlocked as they finish them, so on and so forth. I really think it's most likely we're going to be looking at early 2024 if I was to give my own personal input on this, but I don't no shit because i'm not a game dev and i'm not working on the next subnautica i'm just going off of what crafton is currently leaking now if a potential release date isn't good enough for you well let's just go ahead and scroll down one card because the project introduction is here the next subnautica i'm just gonna call this subnautica next at this point like it's it's just please unknown worlds call this subnautica next or like something because i I mean, you know, it's kind of whatever. I mean, it supports the whole idea of live service and like, what's next for Subnautica? Oh, Subnautica next. The sequel to Subnautica, a survival adventure game that has garnered a massive following. Point one, developing an expanded Subnautica experience and industry competitive quality. So that makes sense. I mean, that's what they're going to want to do. But here's the interesting thing. Additions include more expansive maps with an S. Expansion maps is how I read that. DLC. More maps in the future. We get the one main world, and then maybe in the future we get other maps that we can download and buy and whatever else. That's how I read it. That's that's how I digest it. Let me know how you see it. Create uh, creatures and interactions. So, along with expansion maps, expansion creatures, and maybe new ways to interact with the world. An augmented experience. I probably butchered that, but that's basically like, um, a VR, but like through your phone. When you look through your phone, you see like that, that, uh, that aug reality or whatever it is. I think that's what that is. I'm pretty sure. And here it talks about the Q4 2022 revenue of 477%, which is kind of crazy. Uh, increase from steady growth from PUBG, Subnautica, and the launch of the Callisto Protocol. But Subnautica is there as one of their flagship games. They put Subnautica up next to their baby, their their giant baby, PUBG, which is one hell of an achievement. That That's pretty, like, people might not realize the significance of that. That is massive for Subnautica to be up there with such massive, massive titles that have just seen wild success. Honestly, what I get from this mainly is we now have an idea of a release date for, at the very least, early access. We might have also discovered content planned for within the game and its future being more expansion maps, implying numerous maps with a hard S, creatures, and interactions. Interactions could mean a few things, but to me it means ways to interact with Subnautica. I think DLC. For example, maybe they'll release a massive world that's super deep and you need special equipment to go to those depths. Then they release DLC content that allows you to get the tech to then travel down deeper and experience a new Leviathan that you now have to get past somehow or even defeat or distract. Maybe cosmetics, maybe new suits for your diver, maybe diver cosmetics, looks for your diver, maybe submarine cosmetics. The list could go on. Take my money or give it to us for free. I'm 
I'm fine with that too. Let me know what you think down below. It's been a while since we've spoke Subnautica, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on what you've seen here. We haven't had a discussion in a while, and let's make it a productive one.